Um, can I call now Claire Hockey to be followed by Maurice Corrie, please. Ms. Hockey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Firstly, can I add my congratulations to you and your colleagues on your election? I'm very pleased to have been selected to make my first speech on an issue which is so close to my heart, building a fairer Scotland for all her citizens, a Scotland where everyone has the same opportunities to succeed in life, regardless of their background, race, creed, age, gender or sexuality, a Scotland where a baby is provided with its basic needs at birth in the form of a baby box and its parents have access to a named person who can support them when they need advice or assistance. A Scotland where nursery provision provides a good start in education for all children and allows parents to work without the financial burden of childcare. A Scotland where schools are supported to bridge the attainment gap and school communities play a key part in managing where their budget is spent. A Scotland where college bursaries are higher than the rest of the UK and university is tuition free, where access to further education is based on your ability to learn, not on your ability to pay. As a nurse, I am particularly pleased that nursing and midwifery students will retain their bursaries. These are essential, particularly to mature students who without them would not even consider a career in nursing or who would not be able to complete their course. The Conservative Westminster Government plans to withdraw bursaries in England and this, I fear, will inevitably lead to a reduction in the number of students applying to train as nurses and midwives. A recruitment crisis is inevitable if they continue with these plans. But a fairer Scotland extends beyond childhood and education. Under this government, all will have access to an NHS that will remain safely in public hands, free at the point of need and without a tax and illness in the form of prescription charges. New powers will also allow us to establish a social security agency for Scotland with fairness and dignity at its core. As a mental health nurse, I have seen the anguish and the terror that disability benefit reviews have caused to some of the most vulnerable in our society. Stress and anxiety is having an adverse effect on the mental health of those being assessed and reassessed and reassessed. Many are being refused benefits or having benefits cut or withdrawn only to have them reinstated on appeal while, in the interim, having to try and make ends meet financially. And as a direct consequence, many have to rely on food banks to survive. For our workers, fairness means access to fair work for fair pay by continuing to work to extend the living wage. Presiding officer, the biggest threat to workers' rights at the moment is the Westminster Government's trade union bill. This legislation, if passed, will make it almost impossible for trade unions to operate effectively. It will restrict the ability of unions to recruit and to represent members. It will restrict how they use their resources and it will place restrictions on peaceful picketing and protests. All of this taken together fundamentally undermines the rights of unions to organise and to negotiate on behalf of their members. It also undermines the basic human right of workers to withdraw their labour by placing draconian restrictions on carrying out strike ballots. All of this at a time when industrial unrest is at an historic low. I must declare a vested interest in this proposed act. As an active trade unionist for many years, I have fought discrimination and unfair working practices. I've represented workers who've been accused of wrongdoing, and I've been on strike and manned picket lines to try to protect NHS pensions. This government has pledged to do all it can to mitigate the effects of this bill, but some of those sitting in this parliament should remember when they voiced their opposition to this legislation. Their parties had the power to devolve powers over employment and trade union law during the Smith Commission. They chose not to do so. So do not criticise this administration for not doing enough when you leave it to fight for Scotland's workers with one hand tied behind its back. <laughs> Presiding officer, as this is my first speech, it's only correct I play tribute, tribute to the previous Rutherglen constituency MSP, James Kelly, and thank him for the service he gave my community over the past nine years. I'm sure the people of Rutherglen were grateful for the representation he gave them here. He was elected on the Glasgow list and so has returned to the Scottish Parliament. And I look forward to working with him and all of the Glasgow list MSPs from across the parties to ensure Rutherglen constituency thrives and grows over the next five years. I'm a Rutherglen girl. I grew up in the town. I spent my childhood playing in the local streets and the parks. I attended local schools. And I returned to the area to raise my own family, knowing it was an ideal place to live, 
learn and work. Rutherglen, Cambuslang, Halfway and Blantyre have an industrial heritage of coal mining, steelworks and manufacturing. And all of those played a part in building up the constituency and the populations of the area. Local industry was decimated during the Thatcher era. We recently saw shadows of that past in the threat to the Liberty House Steelworks in Cambus Lang. Through the efforts of the Scottish Government and the Steel Task Force, we were relieved to have that threat alleviated. I am extremely proud and humbled to have been trusted by my local community to come to Parliament to represent them, and I intend to do that to the best of my ability. Presiding Officer, a fairer Scotland can only benefit all of the people of Scotland. My constituents have voted for a better future and one where economic and social inequalities are addressed. My promise was that I would be a strong voice for them here and I will use every opportunity to fulfil that promise. Thank you.